smoke. You know, the head coaching carousel has, for the most part, been filled. There's a couple of jobs today that have uh, been filled, but now they're starting to piece together, uh, piece together their staffs. Jeff Levy, who once coached at Baylor, Art Browse's son-in-law at Ole Miss, who's done a great job for Lane Kiffin, and the Rebels is now the offensive coordinator uh, with Oklahoma. That is not a surprise. Neil McCready, who joined us on Monday, covers Ole Miss, thought that even before the fact he finished our segment with him, that uh, that would be announced. But that's a nice hire for Brent Venables. They needed a spark, and they get one. And uh, Jason Kersey from The Athletic, who covers OU, will join us today at 5 o'clock. Yeah, I, I think it's a kind of a slam dunk hire and, and allows them to go into the kind of offense that can they continue to like. It's different than Lincoln Riley's, but it's you know similar in, in scheme and uh, they're now a, a, a you know in, in the Bryles tree of offense. Yeah, I don't want to hear anything about culture from Oklahoma fans and Baylor for a while uh, based on this hire, just because I heard all the comments, you know, a few years ago, and now we've seen those staffs go out and spread out all over the country and stop at various places. So Oklahoma fans, the same staff that you were talking about about a couple years ago, you now hired the son-in-law. So uh, from that standpoint, I hope that dies down. Um, although it's it's died down over the last couple of years but you know when you you beat Oklahoma three weeks four weeks ago what, what is like the first thing that said after the game right it's like oh well we're still classic you know whatever is that kind of jazz well now you've hired Jeff Levy now as far as just the hire itself and, and all that um, you know one of the best up-and-coming offensive coordinators there is out there and uh, you know did a great job at Ole Miss did a great job with Matt Corral they're a very good team um, and obviously we're, we're firmly in the mix of you know the SEC throughout the year and, and just the national discussion uh, quite a bit as well so uh, did a good job there and I think he'll do a great job at Oklahoma you know played there has a love for the school obviously uh, I think that you know doesn't always necessarily facilitate wins but I do think it kind of can come into play a little bit at times and just knowing the knowing the lay of the land and having that that kind of different passion for it because you represented it at one point. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, he's back in the Big 12. I think it's very interesting when you look at the Big 12, the hires that have been made this offseason for a defensive league. It's about to get really offensive uh, when you look at what TCU, Tech, and now Oklahoma have done with their coordinator hires and their head coaching hires. So uh, I know Venables is a defensive guy, but Lebby obviously is, is an offensive uh, you know, offensive uh, up-and-comer. So, yeah, good hire, and uh, we'll see what – you know, Venables is able to do as far as piecing the rest of it together. Yeah, if anyone wants to bring up who was a part of a staff back during what happened with Baylor, uh, then then go ahead and stick your head in in, in basically your ass, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, because uh, well, it's already very off, uh, very much off season. Uh, Casey Horney was hired by UT and Tom Herman, and others have been hired more than once, sometimes two and three times. I'm happy for Jeff Lebby. I know he left under very difficult circumstances. And a lot of people at Baylor, when he left, they didn't like him because of how that staff ended the year despite the win against Boise State. But uh, if you look at anybody on that staff that might have been as affected as Kendall was, Jeff Lebby, that's his father-in-law, and that is his brother-in-law, and also him who was a part of that. And I saw that some national tweeter, Twitter uh, feed uh, said it, it, me it means more, and then they put up a story about Levy and Baylor. And my God, would you please just well, move on with your life and stop being so freaking miserable? Well, I mean, it depends on, I guess, where you're coming from with that. I don't know who you're talking about specifically, but I have a cousin that lives in Norman, went to Oklahoma, and she brought up Levy's past in talking about the potential hire on Saturday to me. I was talking, texting back and forth about the – you know, the staff and talking about Venables and all that. And she's like, well, what are you hearing as far as, you know, other names? And I just told her the same stuff that pretty much everybody's hearing. And I brought up Lebby and she herself said, you know, I'm a little bit hesitant on that one because of what happened at Baylor. I'm a little unsure about that one. And she th said, I think that the fans are kind of like, eh, I don't know, let's see there. Um, so I think that that's why you see some of that is because not everybody knows as much as we know or not everybody was attached to it. They read headlines. And that's why, you know, seven years have passed and people are regurgitating things like it happened yesterday and not even acknowledging how much time has gone by and what all has changed. So I think that's natural. And I think if somebody's harping on it and trying to bring him down because of it, that's an entirely different thing. But, you know, to at least acknowledge it, I don't think is – is an issue because it's it's part of the deal. I mean, it is whether you like it or not. Well, uh, and, and, and I want to make it. We need to make a, no, uh, a noise. We've made plenty of noise. We need to make a comment in the street that's right next to us. It's called Elm Avenue. There is a big, huge piece of equipment that is breaking up the street and now moving the largest pieces of asphalt from the street. 
picking them up with the claws like a dinosaur and putting them in the back of a massive pickup truck. So you're going to hear a little bit of more than normal noise, perhaps, than just street cars driving by. Yeah, you ever see like an Incredible Hulk yeah. episode? And that's what it looks like he's been in a fight outside. Yeah. So but, I, I that's just want going on behind us. I want to point out about Jeff Levy, though. Uh, look, there, there were things, and there's going to be things with a lot of coaching staffs. I think the difference between Jeff Levy and most of the coaches in the country is that we know about the stuff that Jeff, Le Jeff Levy had to deal with and the, the things that went on in that staff more than we knew about other ones. Uh, I think in the last seven years, what we've seen is, is that this happens a lot. It happens a lot of places, and not everybody responds the right way when it happens. Uh, in fact, most of the time, that's the wrong way. So even if there was, was things that, that he did wrong, uh, I, I just think it's it's not fair to just seven years down the line like completely bring stuff back up that – was was not really completely under his control or or all that I, I think that's that's one of those things that okay well yeah that wasn't great but you know but it happens all over the place and the, and the difference is and look your favorite staff you can think they're the best people in the world but you don't know all the different things that have gone on or they've had to deal with or or all that if they've handled things the wrong way i hope that we as a society can let people learn from their mistakes. Or I'm just happy move for on. Jeff Levy. And I'm happy for yeah. Jeff, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so that, he's the uh, offensive coordinator now for Brent Venables at Oklahoma. Oklahoma is also apparently bringing back their former strength and conditioning coach, Jerry Smith, who's been with Texas A&M. Uh, I saw some former players tweeting out nightmarish stories, but they love him as the former conditioning, uh, strength and conditioning coach at Oklahoma. Frank Wilson, was 